the weary blues by Langston Hughes. Drowning a drowsy, syncopated tune, rocking back and forth to a mellow croon, I heard a Negro play. Down on Lenox Avenue the other night, by the pale, dull, paler of an old gas light, he did a lazy sway. He did a lazy sway. To the tune, oh, those weary blues, with the ebony hands on each ivory key, he made that poor piano moan with melody. Oh, blues. Swaying to and fro on his rickety stool, he played that sad, raggedy tune like a musical fool. Sweet blues. Coming from a black man's soul. Oh, blues. In a deep song voice with a melancholy tone, I heard that Negro sing that old piano moan. Ain't got nobody in all this world. Ain't got nobody but myself. I's gonna quit my frowning and put my troubles on the shelf. Thump, thump, thump. When his foot on the floor, he played a few chords, then he sang some more. I got the weary blues, and I can't be satisfied. Got the weary blues, and can't be satisfied. I ain't happy no more, and I wish that I had died. And far into the night be crooned that tune. The stars went out, and so did the moon. The singer stopped playing and went to bed while the weary blues echoed through his head. He slept like a rock, or maybe that's dead. The title of this poem was The Weary Blues, and that can relate to, um, that can relate to a literal meaning and a metaphorical meaning. The literal meaning would be blues music that expressed um that expresses exhaustion and the metaphorical meaning would be um someone is in an eternal funk and he can't escape his sorrow and i didn't know what the word weary meant so it means feeling or showing tiredness especially as a result of excessive exertion of lack of sleep and some other words i didn't know was syncopate which is um de it deplaces the beat or an accent in music or a rhyme so th or a rhythm so that the strong beats become weak and vice versa and croon means a soft low voice or tone and paler means an unhealthy pale appearance and rickety means a poor maid and likely to collapse and melancholy means sad and pensive and then now we can look at my literary devices there's um there's one i found an illusion which just shows that it's lennox avenue and it just shows that lennox avenue is a historical place in New York City and it's also known as Malcolm X Boulevard so it's just a famous place in New York City and then I also found a personification for he made that poor piano moan with melody because um, pianos don't moan but humans do and the author is giving the piano human-like qualities. Then I have an onomatopoeia, which is thump, because thump sounds like thump, an actual thump. And then I have rhyme. There were a lot of rhymes throughout this whole poem, but they just weren't consistent enough to be in like a specific meter. But, um, uh, bed, head, and dead, and those rhyme, which emphasizes the author's intentions of how he wants you to interpret his poem. He's basically painting a picture of 
how you're supposed to think about it and your interpretations and he's basically like placing what your emotions are supposed to feel and how you're supposed to see his vision of the poem and the song that's being um, said. The um, structure of this poem is it has two stanzas and it's um, free verse and it has an irregular rhyme scheme. The tone was two different things. The speaker's tone, so the actual person who's um, talking, so the author, would be um, observative and admirable. And then the song, so the singer's tone, would be melancholy, dejected, and lonely. And the plot throughout this um, poem is just that the speaker hears a song being played by an African-American man on the street where the speaker could really feel the emotion through the piano and the song. The singer is swaying back and forth to the melody that he created. And the song originates from the African-American soul. So he's really going deep into his feelings and deep into how he feels, which is um, another example of how blues music came about in African-American um, dehumanization. Um, the, singers, um, the singer sings his realization of not being happy and satisfied with his life anymore. Um, he wants to die since he has nothing in the world, but then he finally stops and he comes to a realization that he needs to stop complaining about his troubles. And then after working so hard, the singer appears to be so weary and exhausted that... Um, exhausted that he just appears to be he looks like he's dead but he's really not he's just sleeping and then um a theme throughout this poem was just that um race and how not everyone in the world feels um not everyone in the world feels the same. So the whites during this time, they would never have to go through all this, have to stay out late, sing about their troubles. That's the whole reason why African Americans made blues music. It's part of how they express their their strong emotions on on the oppressiveness of their life. And um and then another theme would be suffering and how the singer is suffering every day, which relates back to the title of Weary Blues. He just can't get out of his suffering and sorrow. And another theme would be people express their emotions in all different ways. So, for example, the singer is expressing his emotion through song. He's expressing his like you can clearly tell his emotion you can feel it through his music just like the speaker was saying he could literally he could feel and he could see the melody through his hands he could feel the tune of the weary blues he could see him swaying back and forth you can just feel it you can hear it you can just see it and um another um Another thing about that is how um, you can open your eye. It's like open your eyes and ears to the African-American's pain and sorrow. So that's all throughout blues music. You can just see the emotion, feel it. Like you just feel like you're one with the music. And lastly, another theme is overcoming hardships and troubles because the, the singer is he's making a decision he's not going to complain about his hardships he's not going to complain about how he has no one in the world he's just going to get over it he's going to accept it and he's dealing with it and then this relates to um americanism and i um put down some questions of how it relates to it it's sort of like why do americans have to work to the point of complete exertion. Like African Americans during this time in the Harlem Renaissance, they were the only ones that had to deal with this and had to really, had to deal with 
being different and not being accepted by that dominant race. They were the minority in the situation and they always have been. And then another question would be, why do other races have it easier in life if we are all Americans? So if we all live in the same place and we're all supposed to be equal and that's what the United States is supposed to portray equals and people who who aren't discriminated, why is Af- the African American race still discriminated? Why are we not equal? Like what's the issue in this circumstance? And um Lastly, I forgot to mention that um, Langston Hughes was just a Harlem Renaissance um, poet. So a lot of his poems had to do with race, Americanism, and really had to do with what are African Americans feeling and what's the emotion that and the reasoning to why life is like this and why life is so hard during this time. So thank you for listening. This was The Weary Blues by Langston Hughes. And this is Lindsay Lewis talking. Thanks.